Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna go over 12 ways to prepare your body for an extended fast. And really, this is not just about preparing for it, but things to do during the extended fast to get the benefits. We know that when you start fasting beyond two days, like a three, four, five day fast, you get incredible benefits. Your body starts producing so much more new healthy cells. We, have, we, we ramp up autophagy. We ramp up stem cell development, ketosis, human growth hormones. So incredible benefits. Um, a lot of reasons to do it, especially if you have chronic inflammation or chronic inflammatory condition can be extraordinarily beneficial. But how do you do it? How do you do it successfully? Well, first thing I would do is try to make sure when you schedule it that you have the least amount of stress possible, especially the first time. Like as you build your fasting fitness, you can actually do an extended fast and have a very busy, stressful schedule. I know a lot of people that are looking to lose a lot of weight and they actually fast Monday through Friday and eat on the weekends, right? They eat during their least stressful time and they fast during their stressful time. But I wouldn't recommend doing that right off the bat. I would recommend scheduling a very low stress week or however you know many days you're trying to fast, avoiding negative people, right? I think that's always a good strategy, uh, especially when you're trying to fast. You may have family members or, or different people in your life that um, may not wanna see you be successful for whatever reason. They may be very negative and that can obviously cause problems with um, your mindset and your ability to be successful with this, okay? So that's important. Have a lot of filtered water, okay? So we have a resource guide. We have things like the Big Berkey and things like that that um, will provide that are, they're pretty cost effective and will provide very filtered, very good filtered water. Like you don't wanna be drinking tap water, chlorinated water. If you're drinking out of a lot of plastic bottles, you're gonna have BPA and different environmental toxins. So get a really good water filtration system and make sure you have a lot of filtered water on hand, okay? Good salts. I'm a fan of like Himalayan sea salt or Redmond's real salt or um, Celtic sea salt is a good one have some good salts available. Again, you can find that in the resource guide. We talk about that. The electrolytes in the water are gonna really help you with energy, help you overcome challenges with fasting. So you gotta have that available. Schedule a spa day. I tell people this all the time. When you're fasting, you are saving a lot of money, right? Because let's say, let's say it costs you $50 a day to eat, okay? And you do a five day fast, you just save $250. Now, one thing that can really help is going out and getting you know one or two massages or whatever however you know, however many massages you can get for that 250 dollars go schedule a spa day or, or multiple days at the spa that will actually help you with reducing stress on your body it's going to help you with detoxification with cleansing it's going to make you feel good it's going to stimulate endorphins and different feel-good neurotransmitters that'll make the fasting process so much more comfortable gentle and easier to, to apply so budget out and schedule a spa day. If you're trying to do a five day fast and you can afford to go to the spa every day for five days, amazing, right? Fast is gonna be so much easier. If you can only afford two or three days, I would say the first two or three days are the hardest. By the time you get to day four, it's a lot easier, okay? If you're already fat adapted following a ketogenic diet and lifestyle, then um, day three is typically not really that hard either. The first two days are usually the hardest, particularly day two, I find, uh, for me personally, to be the hardest. And so that's a great day to have, you know, be in the spa, right? And spend a lot of time in there, maybe go in the sauna, maybe in the whirlpool, whatever, get a massage, you know? Things like that can really, really help this process. Most people don't even think about that, but it's so helpful. Avoid the kitchen. Right, it's a big mistake a lot of people make, and some some of you guys can't avoid the kitchen. You've got family that you need to make food for. Totally get it. Totally understand that. If you can avoid the kitchen, especially when you first get started with an extended fast, so helpful. After you've done a bunch and you've you've developed this uh, fasting fitness, it's it's really no big deal. Okay, like you can totally. I'm I'm in the kitchen. I'm making food for my family. You know, and it's just not an issue for me um, because I've been doing this for a while. The first time I did it, it was like the hardest thing ever. It was like, I'm seeing all this food, I'm like wanting to eat it, and um, you know, I'm feeling deprived and it's creating stress, not a good thing. Drink strategically. So you wanna drink a lot of water and you wanna drink it strategically, particularly around periods of time when you would normally eat meals. That's going to stretch your stomach a little bit, reduce the ghrelin secretion, reduce the hunger waves. So that can be really good. And then sweeten your drinks. So 
In, uh, in a past video, I showed you guys a sweet leaf, water drops right here, taking some stevia, putting in your water can be really refreshing, okay? And as long as it doesn't stimulate a lot of cravings, for most people, they do fine with it. They don't stimulate more cravings, then it's totally fine and acceptable, okay? I do this and um, it just really makes the fasting process more enjoyable, more comfortable, and, and, and you're gonna get incredible benefits with it. And so if you can make it a little more gentle, a little bit more comfortable, more power to you, sweetening your drink can be really helpful for that. Just some stevia, stevia drops can be great. Get grounded, okay? This can be tough to do in the winter time, but you know, if you're able to get barefoot, bare feet on grass, dirt, or sand, okay? Or even concrete, you're able to get the healthy electromagnetic frequency from the earth, that is going to, it's almost like showering your body from all the electromagnetic frequencies coming from computer screens and TVs and cell phones. And so it's like cleansing your body and it will reduce stress hormones. So I try to get out barefoot on grass uh, or even on concrete every day for at least 10 minutes. Really great strategy, whether you're taking like a barefoot walk around your neighborhood. Uh, you could actually do it with socks on as well, right? Because it's only rubber soles that we typically have in shoes that are blocking that electromagnetic frequency. Our ancestors were, were around this healing electromagnetic frequency from the earth all the time. We aren't today's day and age, we're wearing rubber soles. We're never really touching the earth. So doing that you know, on a daily basis can be really helpful. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's winter time and it's harder to do that, maybe there's snow on the ground, even just going out for a walk in a forest can be really helpful. Just breathing in all the aromas from the trees, being around trees, even going up and like hugging or touching a tree actually, believe it or not, it seems funny, but you're gonna get a healthier electromagnetic frequency that way. So that can be a great strategy. Also sunshine, okay? As much as you can, again, tougher to do in the winter time, but trying to get out in sunshine, if you can sunbathe in a, in a healthy way, like not burning your body, but just some gentle, good sun, sunbathing your body, really great. The biophotons in the sun are amazing for your system. It's gonna help reduce stress hormones, help boost up feel-good neurotransmitters and endorphins. Really great strategy. Move your body, okay? Fasting is not a time to just like lay around. Now, there are gonna be times where you need to rest, but you also need to move, okay? So if you're doing an extended fast, particularly your first one, I wouldn't recommend uh, exercising intensely during your first extended fast. Down the road, as you develop your fasting fitness, you may wanna do that, right? I've done four day fasts and then worked out, you know, intensely afterwards and felt great, like right at right, uh, four days fully fasted, okay? I, I felt phenomenal doing that. But that's because I've done this before. So that your first one, just move, just get out and walk, get out and just move your body, not trying to do weightlifting or anything like that, just getting out and moving is key. Ideally outside is best if you're able to. If you're not, walk up and down your stairs a bit. Uh, maybe do a little bit of air squats or, you know, not, not super intense, but just trying to get good movement. Maybe jump on a rebounder, like a trampoline or rebounder, get on a stationary bike or, or an elliptical machine or a treadmill and just kind of just get movement and do that uh, periodically throughout the day. You don't want to just be sitting or just laying around all day when you're fasting if you can help it, okay? But then the last thing is rest, okay? So, if you're feeling tired, rest, take a nap, okay? Um, just relax your body. Try to, again, keep the stress down. Be sure to schedule times where you can rest. Your body's in a healing and regenerative state during the fast, rest. What many people notice is, again, the first three days are harder. They need to rest more. By day four, day five, they feel amazing. They feel like they've got so much more energy. So, you know, you may experience that as well. You may, you know, notice that you don't have energy, but either way, you wanna make sure you schedule in times where you're able to rest, relax, move, and really just apply all these things. And if you do that, you're gonna have the best results, the best success with the extended fast. It's gonna be more comfortable, more enjoyable. It's not gonna be quite as um, restricting a process. You're gonna really, uh, you're gonna really do well with the, with the whole extended fasting process. So hopefully this, this video is helpful for you guys. And uh, be sure to check out the PDF that goes with this so you can get more information on this.